My name is Juan Pinero, Extension Dairy Specialist with Texas A&M AgroLife Extension. And today we are with Dr. Vinicius Machado from Texas Tech University. Vinicius, if you would like to introduce yourself. My name is Vinicius Machado. I'm an assistant professor of uh, dairy health and management at Texas Tech University. And most of my research uh, activities are with uh, metritis in dairy cows. So to explain um, some of the people working in dairies, uh, they may deal with this reproductive disease. Um, what is metritis? What is the definition of this disease? Uh, metritis is a postpartum uterine disease of dairy cows that is characterized by a watery, red, brownish, uh, fatted discharge that it can exteriorize from, uh, from the uterus of cows. Uh, usually takes place within the first three weeks postpartum and about 80% of cases are going to be diagnosed within the first 10 days of lactation and 95% of cases are going to be diagnosed within uh, the first two weeks postpartum. And what causes metritis? Is there a specific bacteria yeah. that you see more uh, often? Yeah, metritis is caused by a mixed bacterial infection. It is uh, mainly uh, it starts out with uh, E. coli in the first uh, three days postpartum and then switches to uh, anaerobic bacteria such as Fusobacterium necroforum and Bacteroides species. And then later on the infection uh, also leads to uh, uh, Trupella pyogenes. So you, you mentioned the definition that the color of metritis is red brownish, the consistency is watery and the other is foul smelling. Um, and we know not all cases of metritis, but some can also present some systemic signs. And today we have um, what is called wearable precision technologies, right? We have pedometers, just like Fitbit with people to measure the activity, rumination colors, and sometimes even some ear-based technologies that can also me measure the temperature. Um, what are, if present, what are uh, some examples of, of these systemic signs that, that uh, may be present with the case of metritis and how can these technologies help to find those cases? In some research papers, they tend to like define metritis as clinical metritis, as the cow that have that uh, discharge that is characteristic of metritis, like watery, red, brownish, fatted discharge but not followed by systemic signs of illness. And this, this systemic signs of illness is inappetence, so a cow that is not, doesn't have appetite, so has decreased dry matter intake. Uh, it can be dullness, so the cow that is not feeling all that great, and it's not, uh, have, doesn't, doesn't have like proper or expected activity. Uh, and a lot of times people just use fever that you can be measured by one of those thermometers, just easy. So like cows that don't have any of those signs of illness, uh, they call like clinical metritis. And then a cow that has metritis plus some of those systemic signs of illness, they call like poor apparel metritis. Uh, when it comes down to treatment, it doesn't seem, at least as far as we know, that cow, only cows that have the systemic signs of illness that should be treated. As far as we know, we should treat all the cows so far with the data that we have. Uh, so regardless if the cow has systemic signs of illness or not, she should be treated because if you leave a cow untreated, the cost now is about $200, uh, $250, at least on average of some of the uh, economic analysis using different scenarios. Uh, that's what it comes down to. So my uh, recommendation to the producer is you find a cow with metritis, you treat her. We're seeking right now some uh, alternatives on try to identify some cows that will benefit from treatment because we know now that about half of the cows that are untreated are going to recover from uh, on their own, at least in terms of they don't have uh, signs of metritis 14 days after uh, they were initially diagnosed. However, there's still some like uh, losses in milk production, infertility, uh, their cold more that are associated with leaving cows untreated. So that's why we say like, just go and treat all your cows so far. But we're seeking out for alternatives or some other variables that we can look at that we can maybe leave cows untreated and that's not going to lead to economical losses. One of those that some papers that were published uh, recently is what you're talking about, like some of this uh, uh, rumination and activity monitors that 
looks very promising that th uh, that data might be beneficial to producers that they can say, oh, all right, so this cow has, uh, has been decreasing rumination and then she gets me tried as most likely that cows need to be treated. And the ones that are, it's not dropping on rumination on, or activity and then develop metritis. I mean, this is not, I'm not saying now, like this is just like preliminary data, yes. but I think it, it looks like maybe those cows, some, or at least some of the, those cows won't need antimicrobial treatment to uh, then later on uh, get the full like performance. Uh, we, our own research group is working on that too. We're looking to uh, biomarkers of metabolic and uh, inflammatory status of cows at the time of diagnosis, but also some other uh, variables that we can look at the cow, like the parity of the cow, when the cow developed metritis early in lactation before, like within the first week or after the second week. And we're looking at that some of those variables is associated with how well the cow is going to do in terms of recovering on her own, but also having a performance that is comparable to not only cows that were treated, but also cows that never developed metritis.